Yes, yes, yes. All right, thank you. Um, so I'll go to the notices function here on our platform. And effectively, what the notices function is uh, on campus is an omni-channel communication platform. And it's really designed to increase um, or, or bring together uh, the most important alerts and notices uh, that a, a student or, or a staff or faculty member should be receiving. Um, so there's a few different components to notices. If you are a notices admin, you will be set up and you will see a notices uh, post box uh, on the platform. And importantly, there's, there's a lot of role-based permissions around notices in our platform. So the first um, option when you post a notice is to select a notice itself, uh, select an alert, which would appear at the top of the homepage of the platform or select an emergency notice, which would appear at the top of the homepage of the platform, but in red uh, and white font, which is essentially impossible to miss. What's important to note here is that um, as a portal administrator of our platform, you can dial up or down whether a specific notice administrator has access to the notice type uh, notice, whether they have access to post an alert or whether they have access to post an emergency as well. So if I go into create an example notice, what you'll also see is that I have some WYSIWYG options here when I post a notice, the ability to uh, post emojis as well. Um, and as you will notice down here, we posted some of those as an example. Um, what's also important to note here is that um, when you're posting a notice, uh, as I mentioned, this is an omni-channel notification uh, or communication platform. Uh, so you have the option or the ability to post notices out uh, via additional channels, including email and SMS. Um, we work with Twilio out of the box to connect SMS. But what's also important to note is that if you're already using an alert or an SMS platform, uh, you can send alerts to the notices function on campus and we'll post that notice on behalf of that alert system. When it says notifications here uh, in the drop down, what that does mean is that that's referring to the notifications bell in the top right hand corner, but it's also referring to push notifications on a mobile app as well. Similar to the different notices types, uh, what you'll also find here is that uh, there are role based permissions that can be set up. Uh, to allow a, a notices admin to dial up or down or uh, be in a situation where they may only have access to the notifications and activity channel, whereas someone else uh, who has uh, higher permissions or privileges might have access to all four of the different channels. Um, and as you start to, to roll notices out internally, it's important, of course, to give the right permissions to the right people. Um, related to that, and Shannon and I have been talking about this a little bit lately. Um, on our product roadmap, the next uh, configuration and, and role-based permission we'll be releasing uh, is the different audiences. Um, so right now, the way the platform's set up is if you're a notices admin, you get access to the audiences that, that we've brought across and added to the system uh, that are connected to your users. And we do that during implementation, but quite soon, um, notice administrators will be able to be set up by the portal admin um, and to have their audiences dialed up or down. So for example, if you're um, a notices admin uh, that's working in, let's say the nursing department, uh, you can be set up to have access to only students, staff and faculty, for example, uh, in the nursing department. Uh, again, as we think about the purpose of uh, the notices function and reducing noise, um, that's something that uh, we're seeing is, is really important and we're, we're getting more and more feedback uh, from the institutions that we work with that um, they want to be in a position to be able to dial up or down uh, the audiences that specific notices admins uh, can reach out to. So just a couple final things. Um, if you are posting an alert, uh, you'll see the expiry date option that you'll need to fill out when posting that. And that just means um, 
the, the date at which it expires will be the time uh, or the point in time at which that alert um, will come down from the home page of the platform. Because as you can see, uh, it sits here at the top of the home page. Apologies, I think I've, I've got a few different systems open right now, including um, the screen share, obviously. So I think some of those are loading a bit slower than usual. Um, but I think that I think that gives you a bit of an overview. Uh, so Shannon, what I'll do is I'll stop uh, sharing my screen and I'll give you the ability to share yours. Um, you. And we can jump into your presentation and I'll ask some, some questions along the way. And I'll also moderate any questions that are coming through. So I see a question from Latoya, just quickly as you're bringing that up. Can alerts be pre-scheduled? Uh, they can be. Um, there was a, a clock icon uh, at the bottom of the post box um, and, and it can be scheduled. Uh, and I, I can show you that. Shannon, after you've gone through your presentation, there may be time at the end and we could jump back into the system and, and answer a few questions like that. Um, Dan, I think we're going to speak about recommended communication and notification strategies uh, as part of this session. And, and we'll certainly just want to let you know that's noted um, and we'll, we'll speak to that um, after Shannon's presentations if, if you don't feel that's uh, been addressed yet as well. So just want to let you know I've, I've seen that, that question. Take it away, Shannon. Okay, thanks so much, Chase. Um... Happy to be here uh, speaking on behalf of Redeemer University. I'm on the communications team and just to give you a bit of context um, for our experience with the Campus app. Um, we implemented last summer and um, we're, we're a small school in uh, Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. And uh, so we're aiming for about a thousand um, students enrolled the, this coming fall. Um, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of context on where we're coming from. So um, the first thing that uh, at Redeemer we really had to consider when implementing the app um, was a significant culture shift. Um, Prior to sort of implementing the app here, um, we had a kind of a static portal through SharePoint um, that was very underused um, and very clunky to sort of edit and work with. Um, but our main uh, comparison to the notice function within the app was really just email and listservs. Um, so for us to, to make the transition, um, we really had to consider um, how this would change not only for receivers of messages, but also for the senders of messages. Um, we were obviously thrilled to have this new option, but we needed to consider what that would look like for a transition period. Um, so for us, that meant considering when we needed to, to continue to push notices to email so that people that aren't really um, using the app yet are uh, encouraged to do so because they still use email frequently. Um, and then also just um, finding a balance of how often uh, they would receive notices, not just to email, but um, in general. And then putting that in the greater context of each audience that we send to. Um, so part of what we really needed to consider was that we'd never had a centralized or coordinated approach to communications across our institution. So, uh, so timing, like I say, timing and quantity um, weren't really given much thought prior to the implementation of, of the, the campus app here. So we needed to consider all those things um, as well as sort of developing criteria for what actually needed to be sent via the notice function. <clears throat> As we considered this, um, we had to figure out, well, what in type of information is suitable for notices um, versus notices that are pushed to email, uh, versus alerts, versus group posts, 
what what was required? What did we really need to think about um, in terms of um, what made a good notice? What what was required for you to push it to that level? Um, we had sort of a larger procedural document that we <laughs> created um, with sort of these criteria in it. Um, but within that, we really wanted to summarize for um, the staff that would be sending notices. Um, so we did sort of a top 10 list, you know, send an alert if, um, send a, a group post if, send a notice if. And um, through discussing with Chase and, and different folks at campus, um, some of, the, some of the key pieces really for notices is that they need to be timely, uh, personable, or actionable, or hopefully and actionable, <laughs> though we recognize we probably aren't quite yet successful at hitting um, all of those criteria every single time we send a notice, um, but we're working towards that and that's what we'd like to get to. Um, again, in, in speaking with campus, we were working on sort of what is an acceptable amount of uh, uh, notices that people will receive before they just kind of continue, start start to ignore them altogether. Um, so, you know, we're aiming at this point for one to two notices or alerts per day per student or other audience. I have an asterisk there because um, right now we're doing a, a daily reminder to do with um, COVID health check forms. <laughs> so we really hope that we get to drop that eventually. And then we would be uh, maxing out at one a day on average and hopefully even less than that. Um, and that's really kind of a, a target that um, we've been looking at more more recently. And we are, we are finding that we are achieving that a lot um, a lot better now that we've done some of the things that I'm going to talk about in the next few slides. So one of the things we needed to look at before we could really um, open up notice sending is who the senders would be in our institution. Um, so we reviewed a list of key staff who would be assigned access and then we developed um, new roles so that those staff could be assigned to those roles. So the reason for doing that was um, some staff would have access to send notices, uh, just notices, and then some staff would have access to send notices and alerts. And those were mostly just um, senior leaders in our organization or folks that dealt with sort of security issues, those types of things. We also recognized that um, as we began sending, that key staff would need to see the communications that were going to students. So, you know, we would, we would send a notice to the student rule, but no one else would see it. <laughs> and so um, across this, the staff audience, we realized there were a number of key staff who needed to see those communications. So we created a role there as well um, it was kind of a carbon copy, like how you would CC in an email. Um, we called it CC student. And essentially, anytime uh, a notice sender is sending to the student audience, um, they would need to include this CC student role so that key staff could uh, remain aware of the communications that were being sent to the student audience. I really like that as a, as a strategy. I think it's really, really smart. Yeah, it's been really key for us. Um, you know, initially people started to realize, like, we're not seeing what's going out to students. Um, we don't have a good grasp. There's no coordinated approach here. Um, and especially during a pandemic, there's so much messaging um, around, you know, health guidelines and what are students allowed to do and not allowed to do. And to have just everyone on the same page has been so important. Mm -hmm. Um, so more recently, uh, I spoke a little bit about how before we implemented the app, we didn't have uh, a good coordination of communications across the institution. And so 
we really needed to look at uh, a method to um, kind of have all of our new notice senders speaking to one another about what they're doing. Um, so we really just, first thing we did was we created a group within the app that all of our notice senders would be a member of. And then we just created a simple spreadsheet with dates and uh, notice subject, um, the audience that they're intending to send to and a delivery channel. And we just asked all of our notice senders to schedule in advance whenever possible. We realize it's not always practical to do that, but um, as much as possible, they would be asked to pre-schedule. And that would give us the ability to see, okay, we've already got a notice going out this day about this topic to this audience. Um, perhaps we can push out this other one to the next day or a couple of days down the road so as not to overwhelm um, that particular audience. And after really we've kind of only been doing this probably a couple of weeks, we've noticed the number of notices that are going out in a day have um, drastically dropped. <laughs> and so I think that this has been effective for us. Um, we're still working through some of the, the kinks um, around it, but I think um, it, it has been a good tool for us to be able to coordinate uh, our notices. So um, I've included a slide here. It's just to show you what we did. It's really simple. It's just a calendar based um, spreadsheet, you know, and and, and we kind of are able uh, on the communications team to keep tabs a little bit as people figure out what's appropriate for a notice. Um, we can communicate with the staff person if we feel like, oh, that might be better as a group post or, um, so it's, it's really been a good tool for us. We also put some sort of guidelines at the top, um, just reminders to uh, to notice senders. And then if there is no opening for a message, we're asking them to contact us um, so that we can sort of determine, does this really need to go today? Is it kind of the emergency that they think it is? So, so yeah, we created this group. Um, so all of our uh, notice admins and notice and alert admins um, have been included in this notice senders group on the app. Um, we, under the resource tab in the group, have uh, included our, our notice sending criteria along with some of our other documentation around, you know, when it should be an alert or when it should be a group post. We've got some how-tos in there, um, some tips for notice senders. Uh, things like, you know, including uh, a clear, concise subject line, things like that. And then the schedule that you just saw. So it's all kind of in one place where they can find it. And then um, obviously with the group, there's an opportunity to post questions or comments or feedback. And, and the nice thing about that, for someone like me who's coordinating a lot of what's going on on our app is I don't have to um, answer questions individually. I do it on this group and then um, everyone can see the answers in one place. So hopefully that cuts out a bit of work for me too. So um, some of our next steps. Um, obviously we want to go back after we have been sending notices in this manner and sort of analyze the effectiveness of uh, of the frequency of, you know, are people hearing the messages? Are they starting to ignore them? Uh, like, have we found a good balance? Um, so we're hoping to do that through uh, looking at analytics, um, perhaps doing some student surveys on the app. Um, yeah, and just, I you know our, our student senate is, is often doing surveying uh, of their own. And so we'd like to look at as much sort of data and research that we can to ensure that we're being effective. Um, we also know uh, we are a small school, um, but we can do a lot more in terms of finding more granular role data. So right now, we're a lot of our messages or notices are going to 
fairly broad audiences. And so we're missing the mark, I think, a little bit still on how personal our notices are, going back to those key criteria. Um, so we'd really like to, to do that better, but, but we recognize that's kind of a data issue for us. Um, we need to be able to pull more specific um, audiences into the app. So that's something that we want to work on. Um, obviously, uh, any of you have, who have implemented the app know that best practices are always evolving, not just from the perspective of um, <clears throat> app communications, but I think technology in general and our ability to absorb information. Um, you know, the information overload issue is significant and especially in a pandemic where everything is very virtual. And um, so we want to, you know, uh, constantly be reviewing those best practices and seeing how we can improve. And then just integrating campus improvements. Um, again, any of you who are working with campus um, know how often they're updating things and working to improve. And so we're excited to see, you know, sort of where this all goes and, um, and how that can, can better the experience for our audiences. So that's really all I had in my presentation. That was great. Thanks, Shannon. Welcome. Appreciate it. Um, so I didn't see the last part of Latoya's question. I read pre-scheduled and then I went on to answer the question without, I missed the last half, which was about uh, being able to set to repeat notices. That's not currently available, Latoya, but I love the idea. Um, we're, we're currently, I think one of the highest um, upcoming features uh, or at the top of the roadmap is recurring events. Uh, so I'd imagine similar uh, a similar, um, code snippet could be used to, to apply to, to notices as well. And we have a, um, a platform called Canny, which is where our uh, partners add feature requests and, and ideas and they get voted on there. And that recurring events item that I mentioned was actually added to Canny. And I think it was, I think it's the highest voted up um, feature request or item uh, on Canny ever. So. I've gone ahead and, and added that um, that item you mentioned there about repeating notices uh, to Canny. And given how popular the one around events was, I wouldn't be surprised to see that uh, getting upvoted. Um, Dan, do you want to uh, follow up? Did, were you able to uh, get that question answered? I know we, we um, spoke to a few things there, but if there's anything else you were wondering, uh, please feel free to put that in the chat. I am going to share my screen also to just give you an idea. You can all see that. So on each of the modules and uh, on the platform and as relates to effective practices and role-based permissions and all those kinds of things, um, we do have uh, effective, what we call effective use articles. And we work with you, um, you know, a big part of what we do is, is partner with the institution. That's why we call them partners. Um, and we work very closely, closely with you uh, around how to be getting the, the most out of our different uh, features and, and modules on the platform. So this is an example of the notices one and when you might use an alert when you, versus a, uh, a notice, which, um, which notification channel you should use uh, or delivery channel and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and we give a few different examples there. If I go to the groups area, just quickly, this is what um, Shannon was mentioning in terms of, you know, you might have a, an employee group section or a, a communications department uh, category for groups and a group could be set up, for example, um, to be discussing these different uh, kinds of things uh, in terms of um, notices, best practices and, and posting the schedule uh, and that sort of thing. It really hopping. This really does make the system slower, doesn't it? I thought I saw your first slide getting um, jammed a, a little bit um, in your presentation, Shannon. It's oh shoot. <laughs> okay, so let me user feedback. Still use. Okay. 
In terms of the one question from Dan there about other channels, um, we don't currently use the SMS function. That is something that we would like to, but again, it's it's a data issue for us. We don't have um, all of student uh, mobile numbers at this point. Um, so that's something that we'd like to implement, but haven't done that yet. We do, do still use traditional email, but we try to limit that to um, kind of e-newsletters so that they have sort of a professional feel that still attracts a level of attention um, rather than just sort of your, your common text email. So that's something we're allowing certain areas to do almost sort of more as a marketing tool than as an informational tool. That's how we're sort of separating those two things. Um, so yeah, we have sort of, a, as an example, a center for experiential learning and careers. And so they have a number of events. Um, they do a ton of information pushing it through their group, but we don't want them clogging up notices with that information. And so we're still allowing them to do, um, you know, designed e-newsletters uh, with their with their events, just kind of in in larger chunks, if you will. <laughs> and I see a question from Tom. Um, Tom, was that something that was was added to Canny? You may like to to comment. Um, I haven't seen that one at, at at this point, but I can certainly follow up with the team. Yeah, we typically end up um, just sort of writing something at the top. I know it doesn't it doesn't show up when you push the notice to email as a subject line, but um, we try to have that as the next thing that's showing up. So we bold and do kind of a concise um, subject line, sort of as a next best thing, if you will, until that um, becomes available. What I might do is I might, um, sorry, these my slides on this side are loading really slow. Um, I'll pull this up here. I'm doing a product vision presentation later today. So a bit of a sneak peek. Um, but this is uh, an example, I'm pull that down. Oh, it's really, really slow. We'll get there. <laughs> so this is this is part of what I'll be speaking about in terms of where we're headed. Um, you know, we we do dig into this quite a lot already, but this is something I want our team and our product team to become obsessed with, for want of a better word. Uh, I just think cutting through the noise and in ensuring you, we look at this as like an informational pyramid where you know, there's there's many different layers here uh, and there are many different ways to deliver information and and slotting the right information. At least our job is we need to slot the right information into the right notification channels by default. If the institution wants to make changes uh, in certain ways, um, we can always make that a discussion and the platform can be set up like that. So campus will have a default and then you can tweak uh, global notification settings um, on the institutional side. Uh, but I think this is something that just needs to become more and more of a focus. And as we think about the bandwidth of the entire student population, especially during uh, COVID, of course, you've got you've got some students who are going to have more bandwidth um, for all different kinds of reasons in their lives versus some who will have less bandwidth. And, and that means we just really have to be cascading this. Um, you know, the, it's likely we'll get to a point where there are certain kinds of notifications that are only going out via push notification. And then the subset below that is the in-app notifications and all the way down to um, what you see often used now on Slack and even Facebook, 
Um, there's menu notifications. So related to a specific feature or channel, um, you start to see something boldened or something highlighted with a number next to it. Um, and, and that's that's becoming, a, I guess, a modern way of demonstrating that the user has an activity update or new activity in a specific component uh, of the system. And so we'll be starting to lean into that as well. Um, we do that with groups. Uh, we do that with tools and pages and that kind of thing. So let's see if I can go across here and give you an example of one. There's tasks has an example there where you've got the menu notification in the left hand side. So not overly obtrusive, but also um, as you scan the menu, pretty easy to pick up to see that you've got something new there. So certainly leaning into that more and more. Are there any other questions? Okay. Anything else on, on your side, Shannon, that you you wanted to bring up or um, communicate to, to the group today? I think you're on mute. About that? Yeah. <laughs> um, I saw Dan's question there that he'd be interested in seeing a copy of the um, spreadsheet so we'd be happy to share that maybe through you chase yeah um, just to get that out if uh if that's helpful to anyone else um we can also you know be in communication to let you know how that's going because it is fairly new for us um but so far we're really seeing that um you know i think it's just given um, all of our notice senders and awareness, you know, I'm not the only one sending a notice. <laughs> My information may not be quite as important or as necessary or as timely or as personal as someone else's. And now I can see uh, in the greater grand scheme of things, um, yeah, where my information fits on those spectrums. And so um, I think it has been a good tool for us, but like I say, it's very new and, uh, so we want to see where it goes. And um, yeah, it, it's something that I think is, is helping at least. Fantastic. Thanks, Shannon. And, and I want to say thank you. I mean, there's, there's many of our partners that use the notices function, um, but we certainly got feedback uh, on the Redeemer side that Redeemer is a partner as relates to notices in particular that uh, are really trying to move towards best practices. So, um, I appreciate the time catching up before this session and, and talking through this kind of stuff and, and we'll continue to talk more um, after it to uh, try to improve things and, and cut through the noise as we as we were saying. Mm -hmm. um, all right, well, thanks everyone. I, I think we can probably um, close up the, the session at this point. Um, please, as always, feel free to get in touch with our partner success team and the partner success manager that you're working with um, we're always happy to help and, and dig into these kinds of things uh, in terms of effective practices and share what's working at, at other institutions. Thanks for the opportunity. No problem.